So investing in the stock market is like a big game show where the main prize is a Lambo as you ride off into the sunset. The only problem is the runners up prize will leave you broker than a badger's back door. So how the hell do you win this game show? And more importantly, how do you save yourself from end up entering a game show to pay your energy bill? Yeah, that actually happened. Luckily, there's a guy who's been through it all throughout the decades. He's had drastic ups, drastic downs, and been on the edge of bankruptcy. All before he dusted himself off and said, please sir, can I have some more? This fella eventually became a billionaire through his very basic and simple investing strategy, and he is now known as one of the wisest investors of all time. So today I'm going to sum up four valuable lessons from legendary investor Charlie Munger. These lessons will help you get on the path to untold riches that you desperately desire, and all I'm asking in return is 10% of all your future earnings. No? Okay, what about 5%? Okay, let's just settle for the like button. Tap the like button. Thanks. So who is this old bloke who looks like he should have died years ago, sat next to Warren Buffett? Charlie Munger is an American investor, entrepreneur, and former real estate lawyer. Munger presided over Westco Financial Corporation as chairman from 1984 to 2011. In addition, he serves as director of the Costco Wholesale Corporation and is chairman of the Daily Journal Corporation, both of which are situated in LA, California. But it was wasn't always smooth sailing. His journey had many bumps along the road, and there's many lessons we can learn from, from this legendary investor that Warren Buffett calls his right-hand man. So let's start things out with the obvious advice, which is also critical advice at the same time, and that is buy stocks that are easy to value. You see, investing is easy. You just find a stock with an asymmetric risk to reward ratio and buy or sell it in the direction you want to take. It's that simple. In Munger's head, the easy easiest businesses to value are defensive ones that produce very stable cash flows. They grow within a very predictable price range year after year and distribute majority of their cash flow to shareholders via dividends and buybacks. This is because Munger feels that there are fewer variables and it is simple to estimate future cash flows. And all of this boils down to is Warren Buffett's famous circle of competence. While some investors have complex knowledge on certain industries like IT, Buffett and Munger feel that it's important for the average average investor to operate in a circle of competence in an industry they can easily understand. Warren Buffett has spouted his thesis on circle of competence many times, once in a shareholder letter in 1996 where he said, an investor needs to be able to accurately assess the company they choose. They do not have to be an expert on every company or even many. You must only be able to assess the businesses that fall inside your area of expertise. Understanding the borders of your circle is more crucial than knowing its size. And if you pair that with Munger's quote, you are looking for a mispriced gamble. That's what investing is. And you have to know enough whether the gamble is mispriced. That is value investing. So that's the first tip from Munger with a sprinkle of Warren Buffett. Buy a company that is easy to value, you can understand what they do, and they have steady, predictable cash flows. Now, if you want to invest in an individual business, maybe you want to place a larger bet. Now, tip number two from Charlie Munger is value the business before you value the stock. And here's how Munger does it. You see, he only brings the price of the stock or the market cap of the business after he has done his own calculation. And if the price of the actual business today is lower than Munger's calculation, then it might warrant a decent buying opportunity. For example, if Munger notices that LWT Corporation earns 3.2 billion US dollars annually, he'll then go and assess the earnings quality. What is the company's competitive advantage? Are these profits enduring? Do they require major reinvestment? And then he'll go ahead and figure out what he would be willing to purchase the whole business at. All of this is done before even considering the share price or what the current market capitalization value of the business is. He then determines the price and divides it by the shares outstanding and gets a price he would be willing to buy the stock at. All intelligent investment is value investment because why would you want to buy something which wasn't worth as much as you were paying for it and who wouldn't like buying something 
for less than it's worth. Munger also looks at another variable when assessing a business, and that is the quality of the business. If it's a high quality business, for example, Apple, maybe he needs to find a fair price, not a discount. High quality businesses will have a proven track record of enduring bad times. Also, while at the same time having a great corporate culture and employee team, they will innovate to meet unforeseen obstacles and forge brand new exciting growth prospects. Again, examples of this would be like Apple and Amazon. Munger advises that a great business at a fair price is far superior to a fair business at a great price. Now, the third big one is only invest when you have the advantage. Munger is kind of obsessed with competitive advantages of businesses. For example, if you invested into Eastman Kodak, this storied 100-year company looked after stockholders for more than 90 years, but now it's dropped from $48 to penny stock status today. And even if you still think Eastman Kodak with its new restructuring is gonna do well, you have to admit it's been a bumpy ride and it's been struggling to look after its shareholders. The company's current portfolio is arguably less valuable than its patent portfolio, which has been outright demolished when the camera phone came along and destroyed this business. Instead, Munger prefers to buy businesses like Coca-Cola and Procter & Gamble because he thinks their brands are strong enough to endure many decades. Because of enormous economies to scale, he thinks that a new startup toothpaste company is going to really struggle to compete with Colgate. And even if all else was equal and the product was even better, people are still inclined to buy the products they know and that advertise well. Although we cannot predict the future, we can use common sense to choose firms that have a good chance of continuing to be successful, investing strongly in them when the price is right. And of course, diversifying enough that if one of these companies did feel like Kodak, we wouldn't be left holding a bag of losses. Munger says the number one idea is to view a stock as an ownership of the business and to judge the staying quality of the business and to judge the staying quality of the business in terms of its competitive advantage. Look for more value in terms of discount future cash flow than what you are paying for. Move only when you have the advantage. And number four, in my opinion, the most important tip is do not be afraid of going against the crowd. Munger is known for his very unique investing approach and it's very common for this guy to go against his peers and especially against the crowd. Similar to Buffett, Munger bought lots of Wells Fargo stock for his company Wesco in 1991 and 1992, at a time when Barron's, the Wall Street Journal, and many analysts who followed these firms were heavily criticizing this company, even some saying it was going to go bankrupt. And we all know how Wells Fargo turned out. And now, today, Munger has not changed. Despite the widespread opposition to the banking industry, Buffett has been increasing his stake yet again in Wells Fargo by the billions of dollars this year. The lesson here is stay the course. If you have full justification in a play, try and block out the noise and just concentrate on your own valuation. Of course, listen to the negatives. That's very important. But at the end of the day, if your thesis is sound and solid, you have to see that play out. Acquire worldly wisdom and adjust your behavior accordingly. If your new behavior gives you a little temporarily unpopularity with your peer group, then to hell with them. You've got to love Charlie Munger. So before I go, let's sum it up very simply what you should do if you want to invest like Charlie Munger. You should go the easy route. Value the business first, move when you have the advantage, and stay to hell to people when you have full conviction on your investment. Two of Charlie Munger's most famous quotes that I love are, understanding both compound interest and the difficulty of getting it is the heart and soul of understanding a lot of things. And if you combine that with big money is not in the buying and selling, but in the waiting. To me, these are the biggest tips Charlie Munger can give. You shouldn't be buying and trading on a daily basis. You should, in fact, be investing for the long term, letting the cash flow compound for you over the long period. And if you take these tips and add it to Warren Buffett's greatest tips of all time that I cover in this video here, it will for sure push you to the next level on your journey. If you could drop the word Munger in the comments below to let me know you watched this far, it would be greatly appreciated. Best of luck out there, and I'll see you in the next one.